Welcome, welcome, welcome YouTubers to another edition of Dancing Clear Quickfire Interview. You know Dancing Clear, the leader in dancehall and dancehall and reggae culture. That man there. So go and big up yourself Dancing Clear, you don't know. Big up yourself from Holy Cooley. I'll be your host for today, Shani T, you don't know. So people, who we have here? You know, there's a lot going on in music, you know, but you have to understand what goes on behind the music to make the artists their artists. You understand? So, that leads me to our special guest today. People, let me introduce to you Japolian, aka Philip Paulian. Yes, I'm brother. If you're good. Thank you for having me. Oh, good day. Nice to meet you all. Cool, cool, cool. So, I just want, you know what? Uh, what I want from you, you know, we just got this little quick five, we're gonna have a little conversation, you understand? Mm -hmm. yeah. And just tell me a little bit about yourself. What, what, you know, like, let's start with, where did you get that name from? Well, I gotta tell you, it's my parents did call, obviously, Philip Paul, and my father name. Okay. Um, we were born, they come from St. Lucia, I was born in England. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's how I got the name Philip Paul. You know, okay. You know, um, I'm the only, only one born in England from seven children of my parents. Okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how that came about. I mean... How did the Japolian come about? Well, before that, from school days, obviously, it was easier for people to catch on and say, oh, Napoleon. And, yeah. You know, I had that nickname. Some people call me Bonaparte. You know? <laughs> and, um, but Coming into music now, we had a studio up in Burners you know, at the time. And in, in the studio, one day I was at the mixing desk and um, Tony Webber happened to come by and whoever was in the studio with me, I think it was Gaudi Rang, said, oh, that's Napoleon. Mm -hmm. And Rebel was like, no, that guy can't be Napoleon. Napoleon is a Frenchman. He's got to be Japan because I rasta you. So from that time, kind of all that. Mm -hmm. And then I've worked with Fred Lux a few times. So when Fred Lux here, he said, Yeah, man, yeah, man, I endorse that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. But um, with regards to Poland, if you go back to St. Lucia, my father comes from a place named Bellevue. And you have a man up there named Julian Polian, who is a famous violinist. Okay. In, Bel in Belvis, St. Lucia. Plus you have a, another group of people who are a folk group from that same area and their surnames is Paul and Tom. Okay. Um, I have yet to go and meet them and find out if we are actually related. But yeah. yes, my father was from Bellevue. Also, my father was an orphan and we, we don't know, we don't know my father, mother, are my father, father, mm -hmm. or anyone else to do with my father? We don't know okay. because he was, uh, um, he was an orphan, mm -hmm. and he couldn't read and write when he came to England. Very often he used to send me to carry me to the bank with him to sign his name. Okay. So you know, right. at the time I found it a hindrance, but now we kind of say it was an important thing Very the role that I was given. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. father and mm -hmm. mother. Yeah, yeah, respect. So music now. Mm. Tell me, or tell the viewers then, what do you do in the music? I know you work with some great people, like you mentioned, you mentioned Tony Red William, you mentioned Fred Lux, but I know you work with some other artists. Yeah man, what about them man? What about them? Mm -hmm. Can I remember a lot of them I can remember. You know, but most artists I've worked with in some capacity not doing production, it's helping with something. Um, whilst being in the UK, um, you find a lot of the UK promoters, I got to know them, people yeah. like Bagajo and Beris Bassa. Yeah. And um, anytime those guys did anything, I would get involved or they'd get me involved. And some if people came to them for stuff, they'd send me. <coughs> And in that, I'd end up working, even Bojo I've worked with, wow. doing, you know, I mean, that was with a, a, a woman named Emma Sirius. Yeah. And, like, she was the original person who did the giant, the giants of Lovers Rock. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. She was the original one doing it. Yeah. 
and um, through Bagatan one day I'm working on a show, Pudra Bantan for this lady and she just suddenly looked at me and said, there's a dress, go and get Pudra. You must go get Pudra, all right. Mm -hmm. Even though I'd played and I'd worked with, you name it, Lika mm -hmm. Jan, Woolly by them, Tristan, George, you know, Stevie Fierce, the first time Stevie Fierce had played Brixton Academy, you know, he was back in. Okay, well, but back in, in what way were you back in? Okay. I'm a bass player, first and foremost, I'm a bass player. Okay. And through the knowledge of that, you know, you get to learn what, what goes on, yeah. and, you know, in pushing your own self. Because from the time I came, I took up a guitar, it was all, you know, I always discovered that you kind of have to um, write the story yourself. You have to kind of bring it to the people yourself. Sure. Sure. I don't believe in a thing where people get discovered. You know, it does, no one don't discover. You're doing your thing, mm -hmm. and the more you do it, is the more people gravitate towards it. If it's positive. Positive, you yeah, know? yeah, so, um, within that, I end up doing a whole heap of stuff driving tour buses, yeah, um, hiring equipment, doing people's black line. <coughs> Often, on many shows, I've been the first one there at 12 o'clock loading yeah. and the last one out. See, see, that time the money man then come call it the money, seven, eight o'clock, and show go on nice, everything perfect, sound yeah, yeah. perfect. You get me, yeah, yeah. And, He's the last man for leave. See. So, you know. And that's important, people, because if you gotta understand, without a man like your pony and things don't work. And if you don't know what backline is, we're talking equipment and things like this, people. You understand? It's the man who put it together, set up the sound, make sure mm -hmm. everything crisp. And at the end of the night, it sounds like you're packing between over here and yeah, your, yeah, yeah, everything yeah. is in his work. Well, that's my responsibility because if I brought a set of equipment there, it's me have to carry it there and then the boys, they have to carry it away. So, you know, I have a little crew that we always worked with. And plus we've had studios, I've had like two, three studios. And um, we've recorded like Tony Rebel, Anthony B, Greg Rice, at Michael Rose, Frankie Park. Wow. On stages, Lee Scratch Perry, Greg Reiser, Korea Sandy, Ras Michael, this goes on, Abbasinians, Nitty Gritty. Wow. The list goes on and on. Wow. What about yeah. yeah. people? Anthony Johnson, mm -hmm. you know, Al Capone. What about them, man? We carry, you know. Tell me something, you, it sounds like you work for a lot of artists and everything, but you ever work within sound system? No, really work within sound system. Sound system was the beginning, really, yeah. because I mean, this, like I said to you, you know, we're from St. Lucia, so I never really heard reggae in my house like that. Okay. Um, in fact, when I brought reggae home to my home, my mom would say to me, boy, you're smoking now, you know? <laughs> you're moving with the Jamaican, so you're smoking now, I know. And stuff like that, you know. Um, but in my house, it was like George Jones, who was my older brother, the oldest one, yeah. who was really, you know, by a stereo and had money, was working to buy records. And his, his thing, even up to now, is George Jones, Jim Reeves, a little bit of Calypso. So when I came home now with this heavy rubber dog thing, yeah. you know, just like we're saying now, that the youth and music, and, you know, we kind of don't approve to, of it. It's the same way, you know, my yeah. parents never yeah. approve of yeah. the music that I was listening mm -hmm. to. They, they were more into the Calypso and the soft dogs, Jones yeah, yeah, yeah. and Jim Reeves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, sound system, the first sound system I heard was in the lunch hour at a school named Samuel Peaks in New Cross. Okay, and that was the beginnings probably of a sound named Caesar, okay. who was one of the first songs around the place in a Southeast London. You know, especially New Cross, Brackley, Mike Neck of the Woods, the place where Saxon and all them people come from. Because the school I went to, uh, even Jashaka was there. Yeah. People from Saxon went there. Yeah, man. See. Shaka was in my school, my brothers, then age group. You ever worked with Shaka and Saxon? I have, I have worked with, I worked with Shaka, not on a sound system. I okay. worked back in him 
in Brixton Town Hall and he came on stage and said, Get out, get out, get out, Babylon and burn and Brixton Town Hall catch a fire. <laughs> John, yeah, tell me the truth. Yeah. And um, who did you say? Sax. Sax and yeah. Well, Dennis, I grew up with Dennis family, you know. Yeah. Because the first community centers that I went to mm -hmm. was West Indian League, which was in Nunnet Lane. Yeah, okay. And Dennis' mother worked there, so I got to meet Dennis and his big sister Faye. Wow. So I knew them from that. What, what year was this? Well, I don't care. Yeah, I tell you that. Yeah. Yeah, you want me to tell you? Hey, hey, hey. Your teeth know you were here because I'm before that. I mean, yeah, 70s, that. Yeah? Yeah, yeah man. Right. Okay. And, and Wait, then, hold on, when you say 70s, are we talking that before Saxon launch or you just you just you knew it just wrong? Or yeah, or no, but the most Samson was a sound like the Eunice and them sound then. Okay. And every song played a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. You know, Saturday night real was thing. And um, I used to keep some house party, me and my friend named Basha, bless him, yeah. in Paso, my classmate. And we used to keep some dance in Broccoli with Prophecy and Saxon. Mm -hmm. Both of them playing together. You know, Prophecy now is Mr. Shorty, who is on rock radio now. Okay. And he's running new man promotion. So he used to run, him and Alphonse used to run Prophecy songs. See. And they were just generally, you know, not the killing machine that they turn out to be. They, you know, big people could have got listen to them and raving go on and you know, you want a girl and dance and Later on, you know, the DJ thing, that dance hall phenomenon became popular because when you're talking about 70s, it was rockers moving. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't so much DJ crashing yeah. kind of thing. I remember seeing even the first DJ to come to England and rap and a song was Rankin Joe. See, can you come with racing body? Yes, man. Yeah, and I was there see, watching all these things. No, because that was in Dead for Crip. That okay. was where they did the embalming in Dead for yeah. Crip, Dead for the High School. <laughs> and that's how we used to go with it. The Uni Soprano, the all of the big sound, them okay. and everybody shot, everybody passed in that Dead okay. for the Crip. Okay. In fact, you know. How I got to go to them kind of dance, there was because, you know, Basha was my classmate, so I could say to my mom, I'm going to see Barry, you know, I'm going to stay with Barry, you know, but yeah. we're going to dance. <laughs> yes, man. Uh, yeah, the song system, but to say, what was my favorite song? My favorite song really was Neville King, that was the song. I kind of liked how he played, yeah. and if he was somewhere, around we went. Um, he he used to play at Cower Paul Plassey Road, Catford, every Saturday evening. Okay. So up to about eleven o'clock. So then you go there early and then yeah. afterwards you find a house party and there. Yeah. So and he used to play Brixton Shepherds, that's how I got to go to Brixton yeah. and meet many of my Brixton friends. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we're talking sound system, right? So sound system, we're talking music. Okay, so we have a question that we love to ask. Yeah. What is the first song you ever bought? The first tune you record you ever buy? Oh, yeah. That one the tough still, you know. I can't remember which one I bought. I can't remember which song the first verse buy. But I do know. I think it was an album on the other side of the dub, you know, by Lone Ranger, on Studio One, you know, because from an early age, people kind of always recognized me for dabbling around Studio One songs. Okay. And, you know, we always got the sound tapes with General Echo mm -hmm. and then people there. Mm -hmm. And I think Ranger was the first album that I heard that I thought, yeah, yeah I like this guy DJ and the yeah. way he's dropping on the rhythm and so mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Okay. So do you, out of all the artists that you work with now, mm -hmm. who did you enjoy working with the most? Or you know what, let me rephrase that a little. 
me and my couple, because you work with so many, and it made me not fear. Yeah, yeah, it's time for you to put one in front of the other, but you know, name a couple of artists that you, you really enjoyed working with, and, 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 and why? Mm -hmm. Well, I gotta, got to big up Mr. Perry, please watch Perry, because when I met this Mr. Perry, you know, he, he recognized straight away and he said to the drummer, oh, you have a good bass player here. And, um, he took his lighter while I was playing and start lighting the, the guitar. Like, <laughs> like to say, you know, like some kind of sacrifice ritual to say, yeah, you're in now. Okay. Kind of thing, you know? Okay. And um, Gregory, Gregory is memorable. Mm -hmm. Murray is memorable. Mm -hmm. All of them memorable. Dennis Movell. Okay. Because with Dennis Movell now, I'm the only bass player that has played in his dumb band because he's the bass player. Uh, okay. And then he's the only man he's ever let play a bass. Yeah. But him thing, yeah man. Dennis, Dennis is a, a good friend of mine. You know, probably the best man in music. Okay. My favorite person in music. Very good friend. You know, you don't need to talk about money with Dennis. Then from the ask Dennis this. All right, I'm coming. Yeah. You know what I mean? In fact, he, I, I've done work in mental health and he would be the one saying to me, you're not calling me to come to you. This was bad, you know? You're not doing an event for these people, let me come and do something for them. Mm -hmm. So he's always got my back, Dennis. Um, I've called him to do engineer gigs for me and people said, are we going to pay him? That's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he's a man with, you know, if we give him money, we get it, that even worse. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, okay. Um, so, have you always just been involved in music or, or you, did you like, do a nine to five in the factory work or well, anything like this? Still, music led me to mental health mm -hmm. because um, some friends of mine who were always around the music I was doing. They started a care initiative named Family Advices was, was a mental health organization dealing with um, our people um, because our people were seven times more likely to end up in this situation that wasn't being addressed. Yeah. So at some point I was asked if I would like to come and do some tutoring. I so fly for it. Well, yeah, why not? You know. And whilst I was there, I was about maybe 23 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, whilst I was there, I was encouraged. You got the foot in the door, do the bits of training. And so now I'm kind of a fully fledged mental well being advisor at Mind, Lucian Community Well Being Mind. That's cool. So. Yeah, man. That's yeah. Big. That's big. Definitely, 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 definitely. Okay, um, can I say, um, studio sessions. Mm -hmm. Have you got a good memory of a memorable studio session? I tell the truth, you know, I don't like studio. I just like going there and doing my thing and come back. <laughs> you know, you know, the band I listen. Even when I've had studios, we, if you ever get to talk to my party, you will know, you know, hear him say, you know, yeah. when he's mixing tunes, I'm lying on the sofa sleeping. Yeah? Yeah, and then he said, what do you think about that? And I'll make him, uh, yo, the eye had to lie. <laughs> but him, you now he's a man, he must sit down on one tune for three years. Yeah. yeah. We see him do that already, sleep, we have sleep, we have one tune. Yeah? We go work and come back and still left on the tune. See, see, yeah, see. Gary, big up Gary, you know, mm -hmm. GC, pull up things, Clark, you know. Okay. Very, very technical person, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice, nice. So, what's the future home for Japan here? Boy, I'm kind of excited at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, we've moved into this new place. It's kind of a lot of creativity there on it, so 
that is feeding my juices. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, you know, the studio didn't close for three years, so now we're just bringing it back again and have the ability to be creative. Um, we have a new album, a dub album, the first dub album that we're gonna release with Zeta. Okay. The Constitution of the Dub. The Constitution of the Dub. Part when, when, one. You know? When's it coming out? Or really, sorry. Well, we're doing the final, final little bits, getting merchandise okay. and done and videos done and other different things. You know, I need one t-shirt there, so nice t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to tell you, that this is the prototype, so I didn't okay. have to wear it. Okay. Come on, we have a little flask as well, it's yeah. in white, with the same emblem. Um, we hope to have black with blue across the so on. Okay, yeah, that's, that's okay. Um, to do with the album. Um, we just finished last week. We were <coughs> I was performing with my cousin band Jerry Lyons, Lyons then band with um, Lioness Funds. Okay, you know Tasha Lions. Love. Yes, Tasha, big up yourself. Trilla Jenna mm -hmm. and Coyote Rasta. We mm -hmm. did um, Cecil Rubin Houghton and last week Thursday, okay. Okay. Uh, even though the uh, Corona got on. Yeah. It was well received, I enjoyed it, enjoyed it very much. Mm -hmm. Come May, we should be playing in a festival named Skarmouth, which is um, Neville Staples' wife, Christine Sugary. Okay. We got herself Sugary mm -hmm. and Tom Fai. So we're going to be doing back in um, Dennis Al Capone. Uh, Winston really and that. Nice. Um, yellow man's people have got back to us, so if we can put something together with it, then through June, okay. July, August. Mm -hmm. um, and our band is going to be involved as opposed to the last time when he came with his own band. Yeah. So if that goes ahead, obviously, coronavirus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But as long as that can go ahead, you know, mm -hmm. my, my year look rosy. Yeah, man, you sound busy, man. And then if I can get to do some shows off of the album, yeah, even better. But I have all other albums I choose with like Gregory Isaacs, Frankie Paul, Michael Rose, wow. Tony Rebel, Anthony B, wow. Federica and Tibbs, you know? Yeah. So hopefully we can even put out that. Then I have an album with Federica Tibbs. So all those works now we can get back in yeah. the studio and clean them up, tidy yeah. them up, fix mm -hmm. them up. And get them all wrong. <coughs> like I said, the momentum of being around cre creativity is yeah. making me feel like now is the time yeah. to really put that out. Plus, I'm working with Bermondsey Blue Russell. Mm -hmm. who in Bermondsey here is a big man in terms of infrastructure and yeah. development. He knows everything. Yeah. He knows where the funding is and all sorts. So, Same. you know, we've partnership to, to okay. put the studio together nice. and hopefully do something for the youths of the area in terms of making it be a school where they can come and just express music, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. if, if they want to learn the formal things. We have it to teach them because I have grade five in music theory. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's not That's just right. playing, we have a certificate, they say them things. Okay. Yeah. We have our business degree to it. Nice. So, yeah. so we like to hear yeah. what so we like to hear. The simple thing, we can't even make clothes. Right. Can we have machine and have okay. done pattern cutting, garment construction. Right. Okay. So when we're ready, we make it no one thing. That's yeah. nice, that's nice, that's nice. Yeah. So, uh, you see the people, the man behind a lot of things that's going on, right? For real. So, uh, one last thing for you to, to say to you, Steve. What do you think about the works that Don Sinclair has been doing his channel and everything? You know, it will get bigger and bigger and bigger till it busts up the place, man. I'm not there, man. It's an important thing. Yeah. This is the thing I'm saying about Jamaica. I'm excited about Jamaica. This is, you know, because there's a lot of little people making media strokes, yeah. which we don't have here. You're the only one doing that, sir. Okay. Yeah, I tell you, you're the only one really that pick it up and taking it to the people, yeah. finding other people like me. Yeah. 
and want to talk to me because many people I know, many great DJs have been not now going for them and bring them most big artists and say, it's big artists here, yeah, man. Yeah. That I went them there at the bottom of them career. Yeah, yeah. And then they never call me if you talk to me yet. Like I said, me don't have nothing to say. See. You get me? Yeah. Uh, a, a little lady interviewed yeah. me and she said to me, when did I boss? I said, me no boss. Because if you say to people, Philip Cole, and them don't know who that is. But I've done great things just like those at bus, even greater than them. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, can we play Pan Jerusalem twice? I mean, you know, nobody will play Pan it twice in a reggae. See. So, he's nobody, but still we do that, you know what I mean? I'm just happy to have made my little piece of nice, you know. Like I said, when Nitty Gritty first came to UK, we worked with him, mm -hmm. which is history making, Abyssinians. Bernard Collins saw me and said, you're the first bass player outside of Jamaica to work with the Amazon. See, and when he says so, Bernard Collins said that. See. So I've made my little bit of yeah. history. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, going on um, Jules Holland with Gregory, that, that just keeps coming back See. and back and back. So it's kind of yes. like even when I'm gone, probably, probably it will still be praying because of who Gregory yeah. Isaacs was. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if anybody's going to pick up as Philip Poli playing bass. Yeah, well, now they're going to pick you up because you're there dancing. Clear. <laughs> and that's what's so important. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and this is the philosophy of dancing clear, you understand? Yeah. There's so much rich history, there's so much that goes on within music, behind the music, on top to the side of the music. And so we need this platform so your story can be told and documented sure. in history. Sure, sure. Because your legacy must live on because sure. the greatness you do. Yeah, you understand? Man, it's a great work. So yeah. man, the man, the yeah. great work you do. You know, like I said, you know, uh, I don't see nobody else doing it. Okay. You know, maybe, I don't even know. Cause it's not that raw part. Even though in my express the music is not taking individuals. Mm -hmm. and you know, saying, let me hear your story. Yeah. What did you do? Yeah. What do you do? Mm -hmm. You get me? Yeah. So, you know, what you're doing is important. I have to give thanks that you can look at me and want to know what I want to, what I do. Mm -hmm. You get me? Because, uh, like, it can be very easily overlooked. Yeah. You know, Definitely. enough ones and ones out there, great enough. Mm -hmm. And children don't really come and run up their mouth and say, I am this and that. No one knows. That's why you work for years and years and years and years because it's not about the fame. True, true. Do you understand? Yeah. If it was the fame, the fame would have come and gone. Yeah. But the, the, the foundation that you laid true, has, true. has made you work for decades. Yeah, yeah. Say, right? yeah. And we still, we always kind of, <clears throat> I always kind of like in my life, like a funnel, and say, this is the funnel. We did yes Yeah. Anything can happen. One day we tell one of our, our, our girlfriend at the time, we said to her, we are sure I listen and say, I mean, I don't care on a man phone and say, you want to go to Africa next week? Yeah, man, no problem. And we went, we did a gig, went with Glenn Washington and uh, Frankie Paul to Gambia and do a gig. Okay. So that's how my life is, you know. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm lucky in that the persons who called for me called for me at that time so but that can happen tomorrow and the next day it's not luck it's talent you've done there's a difference yes there's an element of luck at times but it's talent True. That, that carries you around the world and keeps you working if True. you didn't have some kind of talent who's really gonna really work with you True. so we have to big up the man car yeah Phil, philip paulian yeah. aka jeff <laughs> paulian <laughs> see <laughs> so bring up yeah, man. Enough respect for passing through, yeah, you understand? Yeah, and being a part of the dancing clear yeah, movement. Man. Yeah man, more yeah. and more and more. You don't tell him, you know, he was part of my team. <laughs> you don't tell him already, <laughs> like, like, yes, like, like, nah, I left your inch. Definitely. Everything we are going in my head, I give me a contact to yes, us. That's nice. You know what I'm saying? So there you have the people in a beautiful conversation with one of the foundation members, the man behind the scene, the man that makes things work. We're talking a cornerstone in music, you know. You understand? The man called Philip Paulian, aka Japolian. So all you tubers, go and big up yourself. 
thanks for tuning in and this has been another Dancing Clear quick fire interview. So pick up yourself Dancing Clear, pick up yourself I'm Rudy Cooley, I've been your host Shani T and we are